Saddle up, partners, and hold on tight, for Hamilton Bell's most intense showdown in the Wild West is about to ignite. With guns blazing and hearts racing, the Dusty Plains will bear witness to a showdown like no other. Will Hamilton Bell emerge victorious, or will he fall to the ruthless outlaws that roam the land? So come along for the ride and experience the thrill of the Wild West in all its mysterious and daring glory. Hamilton Bell's showdown awaits. Without further delay, let's jump into it. Hamilton Bell was born on a crisp morning of July 31, 1853, in Pleasant Valley, Maryland. Hamilton's journey from a struggling upbringing to becoming a renowned bounty hunter and gunslinger is nothing short of an adventurous saga. Family Ties and Frontier Spirit He was the third child of Louis Bell and Ruth Bell, who were both lifetime residents of Little America. His starting life was full of tragedy. Even before he turned one year, he lost his mother. Meanwhile, his father, Louis Ruth, struggled with two toddlers with a month-old infant. For nine years, he tried his best to put food for three of his children. But fate again played a massive game for Hamilton as just in nine years, little Hamilton found himself orphaned along with his two older siblings. As they led a moderate life, there was not much of an inheritance left behind, and none of the older siblings could take care of the little Hamilton. As a result, he was sent off to Hagerstown, Maryland, to live with one of his uncles. Even though his uncle was an earning man, he did not have much by way of an expendable income. He could not provide any payment for schooling for young Hamilton out on the East Coast, so Bell needed help to keep up academically with his age mates. With all the ongoing messes, knowing higher education was not in the cards he was dealing at that time. So he bid farewell to his other siblings and uncle and sought luck elsewhere. His very first stop took him all the way to Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Only at 14, Bell found work at a jewelry store, where he was working diligently and honestly. His honesty, humility, and peculiar behavior of judging people's skills caught the owner's attention. He never made it secret as he was smart enough to connect with folk regardless of age. This particular skill he had wielded much later in his frontier life. Even though he had not much then, he was happy to get the ground beneath his feet. For five years, Hamilton sold gold chains, sterling silver items, and diamond pieces through the Waynesboro jewelry outfit, setting his sights on heading further west. His next rendezvous placed the further lawman in Lawrence, Kansas. By June of 1872, he had built a bit of personal wealth working as a freelance horologist. From the Quaker state and all along the Ohio River Valley, from St. Louis to the edges of America's heartland, Bill fixed and cleaned clocks till he could move to Great Bend in July. For some years, the 19-year-old man dipped his toes in various waters to find the most appropriate job. At one point, he ran his own ice delivery business. The refrigeration industry was being industrialized on the frontier. He also worked as a hack driver in a boxcar with an anonymous Santa Fe agent, gunfighter, and various jobs. During this period, Bill acquired essential gunfighting skills while collaborating with various agents, learning to hunt buffalo with big game frontiersmen passing through the Sunflower State. His stalwart demeanor impressed the local law enforcement officers so much that he was made a great band deputy at just 19. One of the United States Marshals there called James Gainsford appointed him assistant marshal. As a result, the tenure led him to his first big success in Dodge City. Two years after landing in Kansas, Bell took his talents to the cowboy capital of the world. He had caught wind of a gig posting at the Santa Fe Railroad, which was in need of haulers to transport cross ties to the railway workers of Western Kansas and into Colorado. For a few months, Bell traveled between these two provisions. By the time 1875 rolled around, he had another curiosity to quench. After working under so many people, he longed for the days of operating his own business and raising funds to open a livery outfit. As he enjoyed the transportation industry, and for the next 24 years, Pedal was a patron around town, working as a lawman. Dodge City required much more than another liveryman, however, later dubbed the Wicked Little City. The Southwest Kansas settlement was rife with scum and villainy. It turned into a magnet for all the outlaws ever since the surrounding towns were restrained from the cattle trade, and all the cowboys and cattlemen flocked to Dodge City seemingly at once. While it was still a year before the mass number of travelers and ranch folk reached the city limits. At that juncture, Bell's expertise and maturity were required by the limited number of lawmen 
who had witnessed the chaotic transformation of Dodge City. The older peacekeepers heard stories of Bell's exploits in Great Bend. The young burgeoning deputy often told tales of a short time serving central Kansas. Amidst the numerous intriguing tales, one legend recounts Bell's pursuit of a petty thief who was also a cattle rustler until he cornered him in a dead end. The man apparently dared Bell to shoot, but all the boy could say was that a kid would shoot quicker than a man despite being almost a teenager himself. All the tales and stories surrounding Bell convinced the old guard to deputize the young man. Power Strike of Bell When he was officially made deputy sheriff in Dodge City, he was not even there for more than a calendar year. This position stuck to his name for a third of a decade. As more and more ruffians made their way into southwest Kansas, the value of Bell's expertise and affinity for peacekeeping demanded a promotion. As a result, he got his title of Deputy U.S. Marshal at just 27 years old, while beginning his dozen-year tenure as the leading lawman of Dodge City. Bell's name did not show in the documents and old records detailing the heyday of Dodge City's wickedness. Rest assured, he was an active gunfighter during the town's struggle to find peace from the outlaws. He was known to ride with Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, and Bad Masterson, legendary lawmen and icons of the frontier in their own right. Reports indicated that Bell assisted the enigmatically named ARP gang, believed to be the posse of gunfighters led by Wyatt and his brother Virgil. While Bell was not a part of the notorious gunfight at the OK Corral, he is thought to have billowed the inflamed incendiary tempers during the Dodge City War of 1883. Between the head-to-head -head of Mayor Lawrence E. Dagger and saloon owner Luke Short said, Bell acted as the middleman to sort out the conflict alongside Arpin Masterson to ensure no life was needlessly taken. Even though he was the middleman, he was excluded from most oral and written traditions of the Dodge City War. Even though he was excluded from the famous photograph, some accounts place him as an advisor to the Dodge City Peace Commission. In 1888, Bell was elected Sheriff of Ford County, of which Dodge City was the county seat. He still had four years of service remaining with the United States Marshals. Still, he had recently won over the hearts and minds of the citizens of the most wicked city in the United States. The now 35-year-old Bell knew his only route to rid the county of the leftover ruffians was to run on a Democratic platform. This strategy made him elected sheriff over the next 12 consecutive years, despite living amongst the majority Republican demographic. Personal life. Amidst all the planning to make Dodge City a better place, he was craving a place to call his home where he would be able to raise his family. After Hambell made Dodge City his headquarters, he decided it would be home for the rest of his life. During that period, he fell in love with Josephine Dugan, the daughter of a local farmer. After that, he married her in the summer, confirming that Dodge would remain a stable home for the rest of his life. Legacy and Achievements This fearless hero passed away at the age of 94. While history may not have widely recognized Bell, he will remain a revered figure for all advocates of peace. As we reflect upon Hamilton Bell's most intense showdowns in the Wild West, we are transported to a realm where courage met firepower and justice was sought amid chaos. These tales of peril and triumph remind us that the Wild West was not merely a backdrop for adventurous exploits, but a crucible that forged legends like Hamilton Bell. If you are into the Wild West, then this is your channel. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos. Till next time, and thanks for watching.